Hello and welcome to the Thursday, May 16th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. A couple days ago, I talked about an advisory that pointed out that the Black Basta ransomware, among other weaknesses, tends to exploit VPN endpoints without two-factor authentication enabled. Rob today wrote up an attack that he observed himself in one of the networks that he's monitoring, where a brute force attack happened against a VPN endpoint. A couple lessons learned here from Rob. Well, a site of that multi-factor authentication is what you really need, but the simple block lists are not going to save you here. Geographic origins were rather varied in this attack. It didn't include any of the often blocked countries like, for example, Russia. Also, once Rob started blocking some of the networks the attacks originated from, well, the attacker immediately shifted to other networks. Oftentimes, cloud providers are being used here to originate these attacks from. Of course, that also means that if you have assets in these cloud providers yourself, you may have a hard time outright blocking access from these particular IP address ranges. Rob also points out that these attacks do not appear to be targeted, but pretty much anybody without multi-factor authentication is possibly at risk. So if you think, hey, uh, healthcare or whatever industry is mostly targeted by this, wrong, everybody is targeted and everybody is a possible victim of a ransomware. And then we got yet another attack against Wi-Fi networks from uh, KU Leuven in uh, Belgium. The same group around Matthew Van Hoef has uh, discovered other attacks in the past or weaknesses against uh, Wi-Fi networks. The latest one they're calling SSID confusion. Now, in order to be vulnerable here, you need a very specific configuration. You need two SSIDs, one typically in the 2.4 gigahertz band and one in the 5 gigahertz bands. So different SSIDs, but they both use the same password. And this is not a terribly unusual configuration. It is quite common to find two different SSIDs for these two different bands. And then for convenience, the same password is being used. The problem is that the 2.4 gigahertz network may have less security features enabled because 2.4 gigahertz often supports older devices. Now, knowing the password for the 5 gigahertz Hertz network, the attacker is able then to impersonate the 5 gigahertz password using a 2.4 gigahertz access point. And in doing so, the attacker is able to trick the victim into connecting to a weaker configured access point. It's also pointed out in the paper that this particular problem, if for example, you have VPNs that will disable themselves if they're connected to a trusted Wi-Fi network. The client is supposed to authenticate the access point in WPA2 and WPA3, but this attack violates this particular requirement and it's a vulnerability in the standard. So all implementations appear to be vulnerable here. And the quick fix, of course, is to use different credentials for different networks. And then the next story I had on my list uh, couple days ago, didn't cover it, but I figured I still uh, should speak to it. Uh, that's a blog post by Silver Ford about man in middle attacks to bypass FIDO2 phishing resistant protection. That's at least the title of the blog post. Well, I got to read it now and I have to say it doesn't appear to be anything sort of fundamentally tr new or uh, different. All they are saying is that uh, if you're using FIDO2, that it doesn't really matter if the session token later can be stolen. That's really sort of an old truth in web application security, no matter how many factors you're using for authentication. Once you steal the session token, all of that doesn't really matter. 
The blog post mentioned that Microsoft doesn't consider it a vulnerability, and I think they are correct here. I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, I think, that Google has a proposal to come up with sort of a device-linked session ID. That's a possible solution. The blog post does mention another technique, token binding, but it binds the token to the TLS layer, which I'm not sure how that'll work with all these sort of middle boxes we typically have these days. Well, that's it for today. I hope you recommend this podcast to your Uber driver. And thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.